Okay, so for the last video for now, for chapter 9, I would like to show the difference between an electron configuration and an orbital diagram. And also I'd like to talk about how when electrons fill, again, each one of these lines represents an orbital because S only has a sphere, so it only has one orbital. The orbital is getting bigger as you move up. The P up here, and again, these are the dumbbells, but they're in three different positions. And then each S is getting bigger. Now the 3P is even bigger than the 2P, but three dumbbells. And then the 4S is even bigger, and then there you see the 3D. And these are the clovers. And again, each line represents an orbital. So you can fit two electrons in here, and you would start filling at this lowest level. This is called off-bow principle which you can see right here, how you spell it. So off balance principle, you start at the bottom, closest to the nucleus, and when you are filling in this diagram, you do one up, one down for your arrow. So an arrow up, an arrow down. And this is poly exclusion principle. So the electrons will have opposite spin if you have two electrons in an orbital. You can't go up to the next orbital until you pair them. And so if I were doing helium, I'd do one up, one down. If I were doing beryllium, I would do one up, one down, one up, one down. If I were doing carbon, I'd do one up, one down, one arrow up, one arrow down. And then I'd do an arrow up, an arrow up. Because Hund's rule says that if you're in a certain subshell, you're going to fill each orbital individually before you go back and pair them. And again, you can't go up to the next level until they're paired, but you'll try and do individual first because electrons don't like each other. So they're going to go into their own orbital first if they can within a certain subshell. So within the P and the D, you do up, 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 all the way across before you pair them. Um, to look at both types of methods of representing electrons. There's the electron configuration where you just write it horizontally and you say one for the value of the energy level or how close it is to the nucleus. One means it's very very close, as close as it can get. S is the sublevel, meaning it's spherically shaped and the superscript is the number of electrons. So this is for hydrogen because hydrogen has one proton one electron. If you did an orbital box or an orbital diagram, and again, this was an orbital diagram, then here you can see the arrow up and the arrow down to represent electrons spinning up. This one spins forward and one spins backward. They spin away from each other. And your um, electron configuration would be 1s2. So the 1 shows the energy level, the s shows the spherical shape, and the 2 shows that this one has two electrons, so this is actually helium. So an orbital can contain a maximum of two electrons and they must have opposite spin. Um, example, determine the electron configuration and orbital notation. They say ground state for neon, but they're all in the ground state. So you could actually ignore this and just say determine the electron configuration and orbital notation for neon. And then we go here. And neon, if you look at the periodic table, right here. It has 10 protons, it's neutral unless they say it's an ion, so that means it has 10 electrons. And so when we fill this up, we'd go one arrow up, one arrow down, one arrow up, one arrow down, one arrow up, one arrow up, one arrow up, and then we go back and we go one arrow down, one arrow down, one arrow down. And if we count, we'd have two, four, six, eight, ten. So we'd be done with neon. And notice that the S, the 2S, and the 2P would be totally full. And you're going to notice that with all noble gases. The S and the P is always full with the noble gases. And that's what everything's trying to be like. It's trying to get a completely full outer S and outer P. If there's any empty spaces, then electrons will go um, and join them to try and fill it, or they will leave when they're forming ions. If you go into the PowerPoint a little uh, more carefully, you'll actually see the electron configurations drawn out for a lot of the common um, elements. Here's neon, electron configuration, 1s2, 
2s2, 2p6. Again, if we went to the periodic table, and here's neon, and we re remembered that this was the s, and this is the p, and this is the d, we'd go 1s, two boxes, go down to the next line like you're reading a book, 2s is the s region, two boxes, and then 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2p6. So there you can see it, 2s2, 2p6, those are the outermost electrons. They call those the valence electrons. It's in group 8, so it has 8, or you can add on. 2 plus 6 means 8 valence electrons. Every other electron that's not a valence electron is a core electron, or an inner electron. So here is um, the orbital diagram for phosphorus. Phosphorus has 15 electrons because the atomic number is 15 and they didn't say phosphide or phosphorus ion. So you can see the arrow up, arrow down. You start down here because of Aufbau principle. And you go up to the next one, arrow up, arrow down. And you go arrow up, arrow up, arrow up, and then you go back and pair them. Arrow down, arrow down, arrow down. And now we're at 10, but we have to keep going because you need 15. Arrow up, arrow down, and notice you just go in order. And then you go arrow up, arrow up, arrow up, Hun's rule. So if they said how many unpaired electrons in phosphorus, you'd say three. And if you look at a periodic table, phosphorus is in group five, so it has five valence electrons. And if we go back and we look at this, it has in the 3s, one, two, and the 3p, one, two, three. So a total of five valence electrons, because they count the outermost. So that'd be the 3s and the 3p. Um, remember that phosphorus forms a negative three charge, and that's because it wants to gain three electrons. So the p will be full. So then it would be isoelectronic, which means the same electron configuration as argon, because it would then have 18. And again, everything that forms an ion is trying to form an ion to match the noble gas that it's closest to. This is why carbon in group four can be plus four, so it can be like neon, or minus four, so it could be like helium. Silicon, same thing. It could gain four electrons and be like argon, or it could lose four and be like neon. So that's why they'll say plus four, minus four for this group.